Hey everybody, welcome to this weekly update. Thank you for tuning in with me. My name is Sarah Lean for those that haven't watched this before and this weekly update is about me sharing the Azure news or Microsoft news in general and also talking a bit about what I do and some of the things that I've been thinking about. Now if you haven't already please do hit that like and subscribe button. It really does help my channel and it helps other people find these videos as well. I do release new content every Wednesday and every Friday so there's definitely things that will um, entice you to come back hopefully um, and you'll be able to get some new content so it's definitely not a stale channel. Now in terms of the news this week we have had a lot of news to be honest and there's some bits and pieces that I want to share. I've been off um, work for the last five or six days and it's been really good to recharge so it feels really weird coming back to all this news and having to catch up but I love the fact that these weekly update videos and audio podcasts actually force me to keep up to date and, and keep up to date with the latest and greatest news. So let's dive into the news and see what's been happening. So the first bit of news is that Azure Static Web Apps have went generally available. Now, these have been out since May 2020, I believe, when they brought out the preview feature. And I actually think I have a website running on one of these um, static web apps. So I need to go and check if the pricing has changed because when it was in preview, it was free. But Azure Static Web Apps allow you to deploy static web applications. So content that's mostly static can be deployed here. And they're great for those kind of simplified web apps that you might have. Um, as I said, I have a, a website there that's fairly simple. Um, it's a listing of Azure user groups around the world and is only updated periodically. Um, I don't think I've updated it in the last six months. But it shows you the, the ability that you can do it. I've got it deploying via um, GitHub. So all my source code sits in a repository in GitHub. GitHub Actions builds that project and then pushes it up into Azure Static Web Apps. And then it's deployed through that and, and made visible via the Azure Static Web Apps. So great functionality and I'm great, glad to see that it's went generally available because it definitely has been a long time that it's been in preview. So again, check it out. Now, the next bit of news is around Azure Site Recovery and being able to enable Azure Site Recovery the minute that you create a virtual machine. Um, so if you're creating a virtual machine through the Azure portal, there's now a tick box or an option where you can enable Azure Site Recovery straight away, which is great for making sure that everything is protected from the minute that it's deployed. Because let's face it, how many of us have deployed something and then forgot to enable backup or forgot to enable the disaster recovery plan and then got caught out by it. So being able to do this at deployment is a real adv advantage for everybody. Um, it means that your environments are protected right from the get-go and you're not potentially having an issue where you're not protected. So another great feature within the Azure portal. So definitely check that out. Um, obviously, if you're using ARM templates or Terraform or Bicep to deploy, then there's various other ways that you can do this. Um, you could be using Azure Policy to enable it. Or you could be doing some other kind of deployment behind it. But again, if you're using the Azure portal, it's dead easy to get started and make sure that you are enabling that Azure Site Recovery feature right away when you are deploying that virtual machine as well. Now, the next bit of news that actually happened while I was off was the Azure logo got a revamp. So we now have a new Azure logo and it looks pretty cool, I think. Um, I think when I first saw this um, in the news, I wasn't overly keen on it, but it has actually grown on me, to be honest. Um, so it definitely is a nice change. But what it was, what it means is actually, I was looking through my sticker collection the other day because someone asked me to send them some stickers and I noticed that a lot of the stickers that I have have the old logo on them. So there's going to be a whole new revamp of stickers going to have to happen before we go back into in-person events because no one wants the old stickers or maybe they're going to be come collector's editions. Who knows? But we now have a new um, icon for Azure. So hopefully we'll get to see that starting to roll out and, and be more visible across everything in the marketing. But yeah, it looks pretty cool. And I think it fits in with all of the new designs that we've been working on for, say, the Microsoft Office and three Six five products as well. Talking about 365 products, um, Microsoft Teams have um, brought out or is starting to roll out one of their new features. So um, we're seeing Microsoft Teams roll out webinars and this is going to be pretty cool because it's going to mean that you don't have to use like a normal meeting if you have a large kind of customer event or you have a larger meeting that you want to scale and make people register for. So 
very cool, very exciting. I do have it enabled on my internal teams. So in my Microsoft Teams, I do have access to this feature and it looks pretty cool. Um, I had a, a short play with it the other day. Um, what I'm going to do is wait till it rolls out into more of a public tenant because I know that my Microsoft tenant is dog fooded quite a bit. So that means I get a lot of features before um, the rest of it, <laughs> the rest of the world does. So I want to make sure it's it's fully publicly available before I start to actually look at it um, and make sure I'm not giving away any massive secrets. But um, yeah, it looks pretty cool. I'm excited to see where this goes and I'm excited to see how this actually transforms customer events and makes it a little bit easier for people who maybe want to do a large team event and instead of having a separate registration um, page, then they have to transcribe everybody's email address out to it, then send them an invite. A whole host of problems will hopefully be solved by this webinar feature that's now in Teams because it's all linked. You can create the registration page from when you're creating the meeting people will um, register and then they'll get the invite and everything will be um, done there as well. There also looks like there's some integration with Dynamics 365 in terms of being able to build that kind of customer back end and, and potentially um, build up your customer database as well. So very cool to see that these features are rolling out. And like I say, I'll hopefully dive into that and do a video. So another great reason to subscribe because you might want to see that in the future and dive more into what Teams webinar features looks like. Now, as I said, I've been off for the last five or six days and it's been really good to recharge and just reprioritize what I want to do and where I want to go at the moment. Um, I think it's often the case where we um, give this big perception that it's OK to burn out, that that should be the state of play, that you should be working 12 hour, 14 hour days completely burning yourself out, giving your time away um, to work instead of your family and your friends. And that is you know, if you're not achieving that burnout state, then you're failing and you haven't really achieved your career plan and you're, you know, you're failing compared to your peers. I think that's the, the wrong attitude. I think we need to normalise taking time off. I think we need to normalise actually taking a break and disconnecting from everything. Um, I have had, and I'm sure they've said this multiple times before, my social media notifications on my personal phone have been turned off since December 2019. The only notifications I have on are for the applications or the apps that my mum uses to, to text me on. Those are the only ones that are there. Um, Twitter's turned off, Facebook's turned off, LinkedIn's turned off, Instagram's turned off. I don't get the notifications. So if someone comments or likes a photo or likes a, you know, a post that I make, I don't see it until I log into that app, which means I control when I action that. I'm not controlled by how much my phone pings. And I go into that and it totally makes a massive difference, especially when I'm taking some time off. When I'm disconnecting from work, I am also disconnecting from social media because a lot of my social media profiles are there for work purposes. And without being cheeky, the last thing I want to do when I am enjoying myself, I'm enjoying some downtime, is deal with work things. Even if it's interactions just on Twitter, that still work to a certain degree for me. So I definitely enjoy not having those notifications on and I think it's great to be able to disconnect like that, take away from what I do um, and, and do something different. When I was off, I went for walks in Scotland. My husband and I actually got lost on a walk um, or semi lost on a walk and ended up instead of doing a one hour and 30 minute walk, we ended up doing a two hour and 30 minute walk um, up a really steep hill. That was worth it. The view was lovely. Um, there was hailstones at the top of that view, but... <laughs> You know, it was nice to do that. It was nice to do something completely different and not be time constrained. We had the day off. We didn't have to rush back. We didn't have to worry about work. We were just um, doing what we wanted to do and enjoying ourselves and, and having some fun and creating some memories, even in this current pandemic lockdown situation. And I also spent some time in my garden. So I took some time off and my mum and I spent some time gardening. And do you know what? It was great. It was great being able to do that. It was great being able to concentrate on that again, not rushing about, not thinking that, oh, I need this project done or I have this deadline or I'm sneaking some time in here to do that. Being able to disconnect, completely forget about work for five or six days was magical. Um, and one of the first tasks that I did when I came back to work was book more time off. Um, I noticed I hadn't booked any time off for my birthday later in the year, so I booked that off. Um, so yeah, it's it's completely the best way to go, booking some time off, enjoying yourself, taking some downtime. I know it's super hard in this kind of pandemic lockdown situation that we're all in at the moment, because you can't physically maybe go away on holiday, you can't jump on a plane and go to your favourite place. 
but there are places and things you can do probably locally that will be safe and can get you away from the four walls that you've been living in, get away from your computer desk, make it normal to take some time off working and burning yourself out and doing 14 hour days and still being logged on and celebrating the fact that you are still working at 10 p.m. Um, on Instagram or Twitter or whatever like that is not normal. It's not something that I think is very positive it's not an image it's not a role model that I want to follow so I'm going to normalize taking time off and I think everybody else needs to take a step back as well and think about it and reprioritize where we are because if we can't can continue to go into this burnout type of situation then we are all going to burn out and it's not going to be productive for anybody we're going to unfortunately maybe lose some team members you know for a while a period of time and dynamics are going to change so take some time off people enjoy yourself enjoy what you can in life right now even if it is just sitting on your couch watching some Netflix or Amazon Prime um, with some junk food do it do it get away from your desk do something different do something for you and focus on you and um, your job isn't everything and it will all be there when you come back after the time off so yeah that's me that's my rant for the week um as i said thank you everybody for tuning in to these weekly update videos i really enjoy doing them keeps me up to date with the news and it lets me ramble a bit on what i'm thinking as well and like i said at the start if you haven't already please do hit that subscribe button i release a video every wednesday and friday so there is new content on the way always so hopefully i'll catch you in another video mm -hmm.